video, I'd like to talk about some applications of right triangles. Once you know what to look for, you can identify relationships that can be described by right triangles almost anywhere. See if you can draw a right triangle on each of the images below. Pause this video and try it, and then come back and we'll see if we've got the same ones. Okay, we're back. I'm gonna grab my ruler so I can draw these a little bit better. So first of all, you might notice that this plane is taking off at some kind of angle to the ground. Actually, using my ruler, I can see it's an angle of about 19 degrees to the ground, but that can also help us to draw a triangle in place for this plane. So I can use the plane's body to draw one, to draw one side of the triangle, the ground to draw another side of the triangle, and then a vertical can be made between the ground and the nose of the plane. And that would be a right angle describing the angle of takeoff for this plane. And the angle of takeoff you could label with theta or alpha or something like that. And that might be relevant to the type of plane, the speed of the plane, etc. In our second picture, we have a handicap accessible ramp. And so this one's a fairly easy one to find the angle for. We have um, the ramp itself, which is one side of the triangle, the base, which is another side of the triangle, the base, which is on the ground, which is another side of the triangle, and then the vertical of that ramp. And then notice that when you label the right angle here, it's not going to look perfect because we are drawing this right triangle at an angle. So we have a right angle between the height and the ground on the ramp. The angle of the ramp is the angle between the ramp and the ground. Let's call that alpha. And then we have the length of the ramp going across the top. Um, the height of the ramp is on one side of the right angle and the ground length is on the base of this. So there's a right triangle for the ramp. The next picture we have is of a man or woman leaning on a uh, motorcycle at quite an angle. If we look at the angle of lean of that motorcycle, looks like if I use my ruler here, it's about 32 degrees to the ground as a lean. The ground would be another side of the triangle. And then the vertical between the ground and the point that I've already drawn would make this a right triangle. So I would have a right triangle with an angle of lean, we'll call that theta, that we could find in this relationship. Finally, we have some beams in the roof of a house and the right triangle is not necessarily the peak of the house. In fact, the peak of the house is rarely actually a right angle. The right triangles are actually formed at either side of the peak. So I'm going to make a, a vertical going down the middle of this roof and then make a base that's perpendicular to that. And what we actually get then is two right triangles, one on the left and one on the right. I'm just going to draw the one on the right here. So looking at this triangle, we have a height, length across, and then there's a length for the diagonal of the roof, which is the distance between the peak of the roof and the edge of the house. And the pitch of the roof would be this angle here, theta, between the base and the diagonal. All right, hopefully that helps you to see that we can make a right triangle out of just about any situation involving an angle. Let's try a few problems. In each of these problems, I'd like you to read the problem and see if you can draw the triangle that results from the scenario. So here's the first one. Bethany is building a ramp so that her mom will be able to recover from knee surgery at her house. The platform by the front door is 2.5 feet off the ground and the ADA requires that a handicap ramp be no steeper than 4.8 degrees, so slope. How long does Bethany's ramp have to be? Pause the video and see if you can draw a picture for this. Okay, we're back. I've drawn a little picture of my own. I have labeled the ground, a front porch platform, which is 2.5 feet off the ground. And the 2.5 feet in height is perpendicular to the ground. And then I have a ramp coming off of that platform and the ramp um, is a diagonal to the ground. So I've labeled that with ramp length and the angle it makes with the ground has to be 4.8 degrees. So for this triangle, 
I know the angle. I know the opposite side is 2.5. And I'd like to find the hypotenuse, which is the ramp length. So those are the three pieces of information that are relevant. Well, what trig function can we use with an angle, an opposite, and a hypotenuse? And the answer, of course, is a sine function. So let's set up a sine function. Sine of 4.8 degrees equals opposite, which is 2.5, over hypotenuse, which is what I don't know. Let's just call that side C, like we normally do for a hypotenuse. So I want to solve for C. Let's start by multiplying both sides by C. And so now we have C sine 4.8 degrees equals 2.5 over C times C, which is just 2.5. And then to solve for C, I need to divide both sides by sine of 4.8 degrees. So C is equal to 2.5 divided by sine of 4.8 degrees. Let's run over to Desmos and see what that is. Double check that you are in degrees. So C is 2.5 divided by sine of 4.8, and that's 29.876. So C is about 29.876 feet. That's a pretty long ramp to get up 2.5 feet. Okay, here's another one for you to try. A standard roof with a 712 pitch, that's written as 7 slash 12, which is 30.5 degrees, is going to be installed on a house across a horizontal distance of 25 feet. We want to estimate the length of the wood supports that go from the peak of the roof to the edges of the house. Pause this video and see if you can draw the diagram and estimate the length of those wood supports along the diagonals. Okay, we're back. I've drawn a diagram here of the roof of a house. Remember that a roof actually has two uh, diagonals on it with the center being the highest point. So each side going down from the peak actually makes a right triangle. If we look at just one of those right triangles, it has an angle of pitch of 30.5 degrees. The side opposite that would be the vertical that goes down from the roof to maybe what you would call the base of the roof. The hypotenuse is one of the sides we don't know, that's the diagonal. And then the adjacent side to 30.5 degrees going across the entire house would be 25 feet. Going across just half the house would be 12.5 feet. So what we know here is the angle, 30.5. We know the adjacent side of 12.5. And what we want to find is the hypotenuse, which is side C. So what trig function can we use with adjacent hypotenuse and an angle? And the answer, of course, is cosine. So we'll set up a cosine of 30.5 degrees is given by adjacent over hypotenuse, in this case 12.5 divided by C. To solve this, we're going to multiply both sides by C, giving us C cosine 30.5 degrees equals 12.5. And now solving for C, we need to divide both sides by the cosine of 30.5 degrees. So we'll do that on both the left and the right hand side. This gives us C equals 12.5 divided by cosine 30.5 degrees. Let's go over to Desmos and calculate that value. 12.5 divided by cosine 30.5. That gives us 14.507, so C is approximately 14.507, and in this case, our units are feet. Just to summarize with application problems, you want to set up a right triangle. You've got to figure out what you know on that right triangle and what you're trying to find. I like to label all the sides appropriately, adjacent, opposite, hypotenuse, and then highlight all the things I know and the one thing I'm trying to find. That's what tells me what trig function to use. 